Hey guys, welcome back. BDC Care here, uh, and this is another one of our weekly Q and A's. As always, we'll start off with a quick update of all the NetherRealm mobile games. In WWE Immortals, the online is the DX Invasion Truck, and that's until Wednesday. And the challenge is for Frontiersman Rusev, and that's until Thursday. In Mortal Kombat X, the online is the normal season, so it's still just the uh, normal season, and then. In the most recent update, they added Blood Rubies, so that's the premium online currency. And the current challenge is for Marksman Kung Jin. For another and, week and a half. And there is an early access pack for Classic Kano. In Injustice, the current character challenge is Dawn of Justice Superman, and that's for three days. That's until Friday. Uh, the current online season is for uh, Blackest Night Doomsday. And the current gear set is League of Assassins gear. Uh, and the early access pack is for Ame Kami Catwoman. So anyways, getting into the update, uh, we have, just like last week, something else that's not related to a specific question. Right, so I, I wanted to talk, speak to this actually, because just about a week ago, we, instead of doing our routine update, we did one on the promotion glitch. And I, I wanted to say, actually, it's kind of interesting, right? After all the questions that we get about why can't you sort of, you know, make your videos look nicer. Um, in this particular case, having low quality uh, production values and very limited post-production was actually a, a big win. It seems like there was maybe about a 24-hour window where the conditions were right for the promotion glitch. And now that the Catwoman Early Access Pack is back, conditions are gone again. Um, but, you know, can you imagine if we'd filmed a video and taken, you know, a day to make it look pretty before we posted it? That one day window would have just completely passed us by. So, you know, hey, low production values for the win. And I mean, we'd be lying if we said that's the only reason. The other reason is uh, it seems to not make enough of a difference to our viewers. Uh, whether they watch it or not doesn't seem to be determined by the the quality of the production values, mm -hmm. so we try to focus most of the time that we put into it, because it is just a hobby and we do a lot of other things, right. into making the information as good as possible, right. as opposed to the production values, and it is probably one or the other at this point. Right. And while we're on top of the promotion glitch too, we're trying to change the language that everyone is using to discuss the promotion glitch. I mean, for other glitches, when they're not working anymore, you know, it means a patch. Patch being, it's been fixed, you can't do it anymore. And for the promotion glitch, it actually still works when the conditions, like we laid out in the video, are met. So it's it's kind of an important distinction, because once you know the conditions, as long as you're prepared to take advantage of it when the conditions appear again, you can do the glitch. Um, and, and it just happened recently, right, when the uh, Ami Kami Cat 1 pack disappeared. It, it came, there was some problem with it, it disappeared for, about, for just over 24 hours, and there was that small window of opportunity for exploiting it. The glitch, I mean, not the pack. Yeah, so when you see it, uh, it, it's not patched. It's just not working as of now. Well, if the conditions aren't yeah. there for it to be used. And so that's an important distinction. So anyways, moving on to the question and answer portion of the video. Our first question comes from Enrique Arthur. Enrique? Enrique, sorry. Uh, and they say, hey, I have half a million, recommend three packs I should buy, please. I came to you because you have a lot of experience in Injustice and a lot of characters. Alright, so this is, a, this is one of those questions where it would be uh, a huge answer itself to even just figure out where your situation is. So this is giving us an excuse to talk about just general overall strategy, and we're going to start from sort of the beginner level, because... Even though you probably spent a huge amount of time collecting 500,000 and you're probably not a beginner, it's hard to judge exactly what point you are. And so we're going to talk about sort of each stage that you want to get to before moving on to the next set. And then you'll just do the next set in our instructions, essentially. Yeah, that, that's exactly Based right. on where you are. Yeah. So uh, when you start, you just basically grind at the highest bonus battle that you can reach. And so the bonus battle, or BB for short, it's the one with the star thumbnail on each screen. And typically the way the nomenclature is BB and then the number that comes after is the page. So BB6, the one that everybody wants to grind on because it's the most efficient for getting credits, is on the sixth page and it's the bonus battle screen. <coughs> so you start off by accumulating credits, farming the bonus battles, and don't buy anything else at the beginning until you, uh, except for bonus, uh, or sort of discount roll packs. Yeah, and that's because near the beginning uh, you're going to get 
you start off with three characters, you're gonna get a couple more bronze characters. That's gonna be almost enough. If you're playing a lot and you find that you're running out of energy a lot, you're, you're allowed to buy maybe one or two bronze packs just to fill out your roster enough that you can play more. Um, and then, at the most, one silver pack. Uh, if I'd say not even that. But probably not, yeah, if you're getting stuck. So the only thing that you're gonna want is is enough characters to to play with, and the only time you're gonna really want more than they give you is if you're playing, like, a lot each day. If you have long stretches of time to play, and then you might want a couple bronze packs, but otherwise nothing until the gold packs. Yeah, no, you make a good point, right? So part of it is managing your uh, energy. Yeah. yeah. I'd actually even forgotten about that to say, make it... it Get enough bronze so you have a team so you can grind, and then totally bypass the silvers and go straight to gold. Yeah, so you start with w one team. Uh, the bonus battles give you more people, so you can probably get two teams after a little while of playing, taking breaks for a little while. But you might want to grab a couple bronze packs early on so you can have uh, two to three teams, potentially, depending on how much you can play. Right. Uh, so when you you keep on buying discount the daily discount gold packs for 75000 every day until you have... All right, so this is gonna we're gonna introduce a new term, six or nine gold equivalents, and when I say gold equivalent, I mean basically six or nine gold cards, but they don't all have to be different. So if you get three copies of one card, that's three gold equivalents. You can raise them to elite two, and that guy can be his own on one team. But if you want a team of basically three gold equivalents on a team, so I have three gold characters that are all E zero. Or you can have one that's E2 and one that's E1, or one that's E3 and a couple that are like just bronze to fill it out. And again, early on as you're getting it, when you get your second gold character, you're not going to want to put them on the team with the first gold character. Uh, and probably even when you get your third gold character, you're going to want to put them on separate teams with two other bronze characters so that you can progress a lot and so that you can farm at a higher level more often. And the only time you're going to want to stack them on a team is when you hit a wall and you actually need multiple gold characters to progress to the next um, bonus battle or something like that. Uh, and then once you hit that point where your gold characters are the only people who can hit a certain point and your bronze characters are no longer useful, that's when you put all your gold characters on a team to farm a bonus battle and then put your bronze characters on a lower bonus battle to farm if you have that extra time. Yeah. No, that's definitely a good point. Um, so you, what... What you're trying to do with the, those basically three gold teams is get as far as you can in single player mode, right? And by having six or nine, well, having nine gold equivalents, you've got three teams to grind credits. <coughs> so the, the next biggest jump, once you've got that, right, the next biggest jump in progress will come with fully promoting a team. And so the advice is you're going to sp spend your money in the cheapest and most cost effective way by getting a targeted team pack. Um, so, what you'll want to do when you do that is save a buttload of money. Because you're, you're going to be tempted to buy just uh, whatever team is in the store, um, but don't do that. Save at least a couple million, because the problem, it didn't used to be like this, but team packs rotate in and out. And if you just buy as soon as there's one available, as soon as you can afford one, you might be stuck by the time you can afford your next one, and it might be months before the, the next one comes out. Yeah, and so there are a couple exceptions <laughs> to this. Um, one exception is that if you're playing enough, that there's a really short window when you actually, uh, like, there's a really short um, <coughs> window in between one pack and the next pack that you're buying, and in that case, if you're buying like one a day, uh, and you start out with maybe enough to buy one or two, it's unlikely that you'll run into that issue, so you can buy it if you want, but use your discretion. And the other uh, potential exception is if a new pack has just rotated in and you're buying packs <coughs> relatively often, it's unlike, again, the kind of one a day, one every other day kind of thing. It's also unlikely that you will uh, lose the ability <coughs> to buy that pack before you're ready to get it all the way up to maximum yep. elite. The, you, you can always buy it early, this is just a strong suggestion because uh, it undoes some of your work if you lose the ability to buy those characters guaranteed, uh, and and it just makes it way harder for you. You have to do it with whatever the new pack is then, and you're stuck with a not fully elite team. Yeah. I mean, the point we're making, too, is that there's different ways that you can fully promote someone, right? And if you buy them directly, it's pretty expensive. If you try to get them in the gold packs still, like the regular uh, discount gold packs, 
there are too many gold pack characters to reliably uh, promote somebody. So you could spend a lot of gold coins and get like a really wide roster, but it's not only just getting enough teams. Three teams, in my mind, is enough. At that point, what you want to do is have a team that's going to be potentially strong enough to push through to bonus battle six. And that's what actually matters, because when you get to bonus battle six, then the credits are going to come a lot faster. So saving enough money for getting a team to E5 is probably best, because that can take you not only to bonus battle six, but be strong enough to farm it. Yeah, and I guess the last thing is regarding online multiplayer and regarding survivor mode. And challenges. And challenges. Because it's really, the problem is there's so many different things that you can do at once, right? Yeah, so um, for online multiplayer, you're going to want to play a little bit each season. Uh, when you start out, when you get your characters elited all the way up, you're going to start running into a lot more gear. So um, if you have the time and you're willing to take the hit in the amount of XP you get, um, doing online multiplayer using bronze characters is actually a uh, viable or at least semi-viable strategy for ranking up. And uh, in online multiplayer, it takes a lot to get and maintain like really high percentages, but uh, as far as, if you just play a very little bit, you'll probably be able to get into the top whatever percent, enough to get some gear and stuff pretty easy, so that's definitely uh, a worthwhile thing to do. And you're always going to want to leave your best team uh, and your best specifically like passes and everything geared offline team in your in your online team slot. Uh, survivor mode, you just want to do survivor mode as often as you can. Well, sort of. Well, I mean, I'll yeah. make the argument that what you want to do is play survivor. Your priority every day, actually, if you have a very limited amount of time to play, do survivor first. Yeah. The first one is free. Um, you get a chance at. Doesn't matter how crappy you are. You get a chance at some free gear and some shards and especially the legendary gear. Um, it, there's nothing that's as cost effective because when you take into account the kind of free stuff that you can get, do Survivor. Yeah, and you can time shift forward if you want to do that again, but uh, that that's up to your discretion. So yeah, do Survivor every day for sure, uh, and go for go for those rewards. And within that framework, if there is a current challenge, which most of the time it seems like there is, then what you want to do is make sure you unlock the character if you're strong enough to get through it relatively easily. Like if you can't make it through the regular standard mode, then you're not really at a level that you can spend a huge amount of time either or a huge amount of credits either buying it out or even um, or even trying to uh, spend all your energy for your strongest characters try to fight through it. Yeah, and even if you can only do a couple ladders, uh, the only thing that you lose for the most part on uh, farming these is the XP, right? Because you're fighting a lot of people at low levels. But other than that, if you can only do two ladders or three ladders, it's still actually pretty cost effective. Yeah, so the problem with this, I mean, you're going to run into this every once in a while. You'll see that there's Zod is a character that you cannot get in the regular pack. So it's going to be relatively expensive if you want to motor through it. You could pay, pay out to get to it. And it, it, again, it, it'll depend really on your situation, um, but you can, um, you can buy it out. Yeah. And it, priority is, except for update 2.8, when it didn't unlock the characters, when you finish a challenge, you un uh, unlock the ability to promote them. So even if you can't afford it now, it means that you've kept your options open for later. And challenge characters typically are the cheapest way to get a nice, strong um, gold character that can be pretty effective for both farming and in multiplayer online. Yeah, and check our challenge reset video. If you can do it once, you can do it as many times as you need to. So, anyways, uh, that was that was really long-winded, but that is our complete guide to starting oh, out. So, to answer your actual your your actual question is what you should spend on. It'll depend a lot. I mean, if you don't have a comp did I just put the wrong I put the wrong guy on? If you don't have a really if you don't have enough teams to really farm, then you can't really go wrong with gold discount packs. Except at the point where you actually want to make real progress, then what you'll want to do is. Um, buy a targeted team pack, and, and I don't know if I explained it. The target team pack is where you get a pack that's the same three gold characters, for example, 
And that way you can actually level them up really, really easily. Yeah, so there you go. That's our advice. Sorry, our uh, video timed out. Technical difficulties, we'll just put, sweep it under that rug. Technical difficulty rug. So our final question comes from Harris Cortland. And they ask, why don't you guys use augment cards? We responded saying, we do. Both of the Superman, uh, Supermans uh, have max augmented crit chance and crit damage boost. And he responded with, I mean the health and damage cards. I have my Superman Injustice 2 with 20k damage per hit. So I guess the short answer is that we have. We use them all on the bronze and silvers that we use in Nightmare difficulty for the challenge. Right. Um, and you can see that on Nightfall Bane because those are not natural silver numbers. And the implied question, which you didn't actually ask but we're going to answer anyways, is why don't we use them much on our multiplayer cards? And it's sort of to prove a point. I mean, we've long held from the, the very beginning, once augmentations were actually available, the most important augmentations are the crit chance and crit damage boost augmentations. They're more than enough to make you competitive in multiplayer online. And, you know, what better way to prove it than to roll right through epic battles without any health or damage augmentations and only the crit, the crit augmentations, right? So not only does... T well, not only that, but the health and damage augmentations, it takes the greatest number of cards to max them out, so it takes longer to do it anyways. So as sort of obsessive, compulsive kind of completionists, we'd want to actually max them all out if we were going to do that. But when you get to the newer cards, the other funny thing is that the percentage improvement in stats declines, and that's just a function of math and a function of the fact that the older cards have lower stats. So if you look at, as an example, Regime Wonder Woman, her regular max out damage is 29,000, but her base damage is 750. So what that tells you is that if you max out her damage... Which gives 300 more points you're giving her an, a 40% increase when she's fully damage augmented. Now if you look at one of the newer characters, such as, nope, not Regime, such as Injustice 2 Aquaman, he starts off with a base damage, I think, of 1400. So when you give him another 300 base points, he only improves 21%. So, okay, so listen, I, I get it. He's high damage, you just add on more damage, he's going to stay higher no matter what. But in, two, in terms of how much improvement you're going to get for how you're playing, the percentage probably reflects a little better how much improved the play will be with that particular character when you max augment that particular yeah. stat. And we can put that in perspective a little bit by uh, looking at gear cards and what they do. Oh, right, right. Oh, so um, Aquaman, it'll improve him 21%, and it would improve Regime Wonder Woman. 40%, so almost double in terms of a percentage increase. Okay, so let's see, uh, Promethean Longsword. So this is, we're talking about, we're not talking legendary gear here, we're just talking signature gears, three stars that evolve into four stars. we got to find a better way to talk about it because, again, you know, the gears don't always stay the same level. But yeah. we'll talk about three stars evolving to four stars. And the signature gear, damage boost is 70%, and crit chance boost is 45 And for the longest time, people would say, okay, don't bother evolving or maxing out one or two stars, only stick with three stars and max them out to four. Yeah, because everything else is a waste of shards and money. Right. So 70 and 45, so remember that. So if we go one level down to Mark of Lady Shiva, which is, starts off as two, evolves into three, 50% damage instead of 70, 40% crit chance instead of 45. So you're getting most of the value out of it. You're getting now, actually, you know what's even better? Let's go to Power Gloves, which is one star evolving a two star. You get about half of the damage boost of a signature gear, and you get two thirds of the crit chance boost of a signature gear too. Yeah, so that's actually still pretty good. That's that's still better than the percentage boost you get in terms of the value you get out of max augmenting the damage on on a character when you look at the extremes of the low end damage and the high end damage. Yeah, and that's also still uh, a lot cheaper to to shatter and evolve. Like it's a lot cheaper to actually get the one star evolves into two star right. than it is to even get the the other higher star gear sets. Right. Cuz and now the discussion has changed a little bit because when you max out 
gears, even if they're lower star, you get more when you shatter them. So there's more motivation to do it. And there's fewer people that are saying, well, anything one or two stars, just shatter them all, don't bother evolving them, right? So that's changed the, the discussion a little bit. But it also changes it that you don't want to bank as many if you haven't uh, evolved everything. You want to you want to shatter as few copies of things as possible to evolve it. That way you can you can shatter post evolve instead of pre evolve. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. But, but, but the problem is that you have to shatter them to get the shards to evolve them. Yeah. Yeah. But so lo long time people were saying, yeah, don't bother doing anything else. The gears are crappy. They're no good. But when you look at it from that point of view, it's you can make the exact same argument, not not that we are, but you could make the exact same argument that it's not actually worth the trouble of uh, augmenting the health and damage. And from a playability point of view, I think it probably doesn't, unless you're, you were saying earlier, I'm off, off camera, and this totally makes sense, that if you're going to be augmenting guys... Yeah, certain guys are more valuable, <laughs> like Arkham Origins Deathstroke, with this passive that boosts attack, uh, you, you're essentially getting 150% of the effectiveness of boosting attack, and that also flies under the radar in online MP, as far as we know. So you're getting way more uh, boost in stats than you would otherwise, and you're getting boost in stats that won't actually mean you're matched up against harder enemies. Um, which is actually a really great point, which is the same for gear, which is another reason why augmentations aren't as good, is that gear isn't actually factored into online MP, as far as we can tell. Because people with no gear get matched against people with max gear all the time, right? It just seems to be the level of stats. So the boosts that they're giving here are actually boosts that aren't going to show up, uh, and they aren't going to actually do damage to you uh, as far as who you're going to face, right? right the only it easier but not harder. So the only time where it really does offer you an advantage, where health and damage augmentations offer you an advantage, if you're playing maxed out characters, right? If you're playing really high level, High stat, one of some of the newer high stat characters, because you're going to be facing guys that are maxed out and are augmented. Anyways. Yeah, because if you're facing people who are just below that, it means that when you're fighting the later fights, you're going to move up to the people who start getting health and damage augmentations. And so the only advantage is uh, when you're already at the top and you're making it so that your characters are the best character stat wise in the entire game. And that means you're going to start out facing people just as good as you, and you're going to finish facing people just as good as you instead of slightly better stat wise. Right. So, I mean, you could say we're contrarians and we're trying to make a point. So, you know, so back when people were saying certain gears are useless, we wanted to show them otherwise. And so when people are looking to max out damage to health, we'd like to show that it's unnecessary for success, which is sort of the bottom line. The bottom line is we don't max out health and damage, or we, we tend not to for our, our MP online guys. Because, because we don't need to. Yeah. And as far as we can tell, it shouldn't make a big difference. It so hasn't for us. I mean, if you're watching our MP Online play videos, you can see that. Yeah, you can still make good teams that'll totally shred through your enemies without needing to augment those. It's a lot more of the passives and starting stats that are important. Yeah. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. We'll just let this last fight play out in case you're interested in the <laughs> two sets of swipes taking out an entire enemy team. Anyways, like we said, thanks. Come on.